So um, the first thing I'm going to do is just make sure that uh, we're fully understanding why we're here today. Um, and we're going to take a look at basically the uh, the post on LinkedIn. Some of you may be joining from one of the other SNS platforms like Facebook or something. Um, but the information was pretty much the same everywhere. So this is smart communication textbooks, which are designed for teachers who understand the reality of language classrooms. So um, a project that Steve and I have been working on for over five years now to help teachers actually have materials that really work with students. And um, the people this is best for, um, if I just zoom down here, people who wish to reduce their prep time. Um, we're fully aware as language teachers ourselves, me and Steve having decades of experience between us, um, that planning classes and, you know, getting ready for them takes a lot of time and it's not much fun if you have many, many classes to do that for. And another problem we like to help with is getting students more engaged in their English communication. And it says even the shy ones, believe it or not, um, these materials can help a whole range of learners. So if that sounds interesting to you, um, we are going to show you how we do it. And you have a chance here today to, to ask questions. And it's basically a seven step process that we're going to take you through. But the um, the best way that Steve and I uh, talked about this, the best way we decided to um, explain this for everybody isn't just to go through all of the things that the books do and, you know, bore you to death for hours and hours and hours. Um, there is a lot of great things in the books, but we'd like to show you it through the eyes of some teachers who have actually used them. And some of these teachers who have actually helped us um, redesign the books to make them even more effective. So what I'm going to do um, is we're going to start by just jumping straight into uh, the website. If you've never seen the website before, uh, this is what it looks like, kind of zoomed in. And I'll share the links for this and everything else that you might possibly need uh, in the chat a little bit later on. So um, this is the Smart Communication website. Um, there are three textbooks, numbers one, two, and three. And on the home page, you'll see uh, four testimonials from teachers who have used the books themselves, um, very much probably in a very similar classroom to what you're teaching or what Steve and I have taught as well. And we're going to talk about their reactions to the books and how we can possibly really relate to what problems they had and um, what the books offer. So um, the first one there on the left is May. And I think, Steve, you're going to jump yeah, in. Yeah, and thank you. Explain that. Yep. Yeah, so th th thank you all for uh, for coming tonight. Thank you for your time. And um, as Robert said, my name is Stephen Harris and uh, one of the co-authors. And uh, let me just uh, start with May. She's on the left there. Uh, she says it was uh, I was surprised with students ability to produce great speeches in a short amount of time. So I think the issue that she was dealing with, as I understand it, is that she had uh, quite a mixed level, uh, quite a quite a large group of mixed level students, and it was a bit of a nightmare. I think that we can all sort of um, understand that situation. You can assign a topic, uh, but maybe some of the students can't really produce any sort of complexity or accuracy about that. So. Um, we uh, you know designed our way through that process, and um, and uh, that's our solution. Our solution was to come up with a uh, scaffolding process where we combine uh, pre-task planning and in-task planning, and the process kind of flexes to the students' levels, um, and this is what we call showtime. Is what this scaffolding section is called. And basically, showtime is, uh, oh, thank you, Robert. There's a, um, if you look on the screen there, um, you can see the first page there, showtime. And basically, there's not a lot of writing. It's basically just uh, students uh, reflecting, organizing their thoughts. It's not really language focused. Uh, and once they've kind of got their thoughts organized about a subject, um, can you scroll one more there, Robert, for us? Sure. Can they head into the... Um, speech builder section so you can see at the top there it says speech builder and basically um students expand on their thoughts um and they, again there's various degrees of uh, varying degrees of scaffolding in this section too it kind of depends on the book level but the students 
also take that and they integrate some phrases. I, if you can kind of look, oh, awesome. Awesome. Thanks, Robert. So um, there's some phrases there and that gets integrated into that. Uh, uh, those are the target phrases for the classes and those get integrated into the, um, into the speech there. So they have a text. There it is. Great. And then if you can just scroll down a bit there, Robert, we now enter into um, the next section of scaffolding. And we call that section the traffic light trainer. Um, you know, all the scaffolding is just based on uh, you know, research and experience. And we try to put it into sort of a digestible format. This one, what we're looking at here is a type of scaffolding that takes students from um, not being able to uh, use the the speech per se, and then taking them to a level where they're not actually looking at anything, and they're just communicating with their um, with their partner. So it's a three step process. You know, first step is just reading, and then it gets to the last step, and that's when they're actually like um, communicating um, with no text in front of them. And um, so that's. Uh, about it, Robert. Did I forget anything about that? Is there anything no, more? I think that's great. I mean, it's just a just to uh, add to what you're saying there, Steve. There's just a yeah. huge amount of background uh, research into task planning, mm. task repetition, scaffolding. Mm. Uh, I mean, the traffic light train has not just been thrown together. It's really uh, bringing together decades of research, which it really works as well, doesn't it, Steve? Yeah. Well, it well, it's it's simple enough to that, yeah, the research is condensed into a simple process and it works, yeah. That's right, yeah. Um, yeah, so the, um, what I'll do now is I'll shoot straight back to the uh, website view as well. So that was May, um, yep, so one of the solutions which teachers have found is that speeches get really, really boosted uh, with these materials because of all the design in there. Uh, Fergal over here uh, on the right side, said, uh, I was surprised how well the relevant topics and useful speaking structures created an environment where students were keen to talk. Um, yeah, I mean, it, we're no, uh, you know, stranger to the fact that to uh, the topics are incredibly important when we talk about communication activities. If students don't really buy into the topic that you're asking them to talk about, classes can really just drag on and your planning as a teacher um, the engagement level of the students, everything can just bottom out. Um, we've all opened a book before or chosen a topic and kind of gone, oh, this is just not going to really do it. So um, an enormous amount of work has been put into uh, making sure that doesn't happen. So the topics, if you uh, look in the book, are fantastic. Um, they are all aligned with uh, tests as well. So these aren't just engaging for students. Um, if you're teaching students to pass, for example, IELTS, Aiken, Aiken uh, TOEIC, TOEFL, uh, any of these kind of tests that students take for writing or speaking, um, they all align with very typical topics and all the activities connect very well to the kind of language use they'll need. Um, to express themselves, either in terms of their preferences, uh, giving opinions, um, or just debating or discussing different things. So, um, yeah, I mean, they're very colourful too. The books are in really good colour. Steve, do you have any favourites that you like teaching with? Uh, I think if I'm going to be honest, uh, oh, they stop there, travel. Uh, this one? Yeah. I see that picture, that reminds me of my trip to Thailand, and I'm like, <laughs> oh, man. It's just... Yeah. This sends me to a happy place. I've um, recently quite enjoyed this future world one as well, actually. I mean, things like AI students are aware of and just talking about how the world's changing. They've really enjoyed that as well. And I mean, a lot of these topics are so engaging and so much fun um, that, you know, you often as a teacher sometimes actually would rather join the discussions than just kind of stand back and watch, um, which is really making, you know, your workload and effort you put into your classes a lot less. Um, yeah. Um, okay. I think we can, uh, shoot on to the third, sure, let's to the next one, um, which is down here. So on the left side, we have, uh, Arthur, um, Arthur. go ahead. I'll do that one. Oh, there he is. We look at that. We've 
Brought him in the uh, Oh, he's the here today, I think. Yeah. Hospital. So, Arthur, maybe later we can uh, give you a chance Yeah, to yeah, say hi. sure, <laughs> sure. Um, so Arthur says here, he says, uh, I was very happy when my class preparation was brought down to an absolute minimum. So obviously the problem that Arthur and every teacher that has existed since the beginning of time is dealing with is uh, time scarcity. And uh, we're, we're all just super busy. And so the question is then, so how does, how does uh, the smart communication textbook create no preparation? So there's a couple of ways here. Uh, I'll go through it real quick. First, the first is that there is a seven, uh, there's seven steps and the target language is implied or integrated into all of those steps. So uh, Robert, do you mind putting up? Um, Here we go. okay, so so we've got, if you look at the, at the top left, it says class one, class two. So just keep that in your mind. We talk, we're always thinking of these seven steps in a two class cycle. Now that's the title page. Now let's, let's get to the meat and potatoes here. Um, top left-hand corner, it says number one, ready. Now the ready section is, is a section that activates students' knowledge of, on the uh, topic. And then if you kind of, oh, thanks, Robert. Uh, if you kind of scan over to about the middle there, you've got, it says a number two, smart check. This is where we introduce the target language for the students. And then um, step three is the um, challenge section. If uh, I'll just give Robert a moment there to, there you go. Uh, if you look on the top left, you can see the challenge section. This is where students actually practice. We try to prompt them to practice the target language. Uh, if you go down below that to step four, you can see Dwayne's world. And this is a listening comprehension that focuses on the target language. And then step five, uh, thank you, sir. That is uh, the Champion Connect. And that's uh, just a simple flashcard game that practices uh, accuracy with the target language. And then step six is the showtime. And that's what uh, I described a moment ago, but this is where the students write and present uh, all based on the target language. And then uh, step seven, Um, about halfway down there in the middle there on the left, there it is, step seven. Uh, this is the let's master section. And it's basically just follow-up activities that uh, support all of that learning that has been happening. So you got these seven steps and then you take all those seven steps and you repeat them. And so class three and four is gonna have a repetition of those steps. Uh, class five and six, it'll just have a repetition of those steps. And when we were designing this, my initial thought um, was that I said, Robert, this is going to be boring. <laughs> and we tried it anyways, and I was wrong. Uh, the irony is, is that when you repeat the process, the students get used to the to the steps, and it kind of uh, locks them into a kind of a rhythm. And they know what each section is aiming for. They know And it, it kind of the result is it kind of just frees them up to just focus on the activities. And uh, it also, the teachers get used to it. It, it. The first class cycle, no, but the second class cycle, yes. And it kind of frees up the teachers. They know exactly what's coming with each step. If you want to cut out a step for whatever reason, you know what you're cutting out. And we all just know what's trying to be achieved. And it's just simple. So that's not to say that teachers don't bring their own touches to it. Um, of course, that happens all the time. But if you're pinched for time, it, it's no problem. Uh, you can just literally walk into the class, uh, the bell rings, and you go, oh, where was I? And OK, I was uh, on this page. OK, fine. And you just continue from there. If I can jump in there, Steve, as well. Um, yeah, 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 go for it. I, I, everything you said was great. I just think I'd like to say as well that Sure, sure, sure. kind, kind of what you were saying as well, Steve, that You know, the cognitive load we put on language learners sometimes is a little bit overwhelming, especially if we really want to push them far in terms of the complexity of a speech or an essay that they can produce. So if we can reduce that cognitive load, if we can take away the um, load of trying to understand how to do an activity or what is it's expected of them and just put it purely on the language that they're going to produce with each other, 
that was why Steve and I came up with the seven steps, because once you get into that cycle, you take away all of that load from the students and of teachers as well, which is really nice. Um, and it just flows. It just works a lot more smoothly. And it isn't boring to repeat things. I, I was a little bit hesitant about that too, but it's quite all right to let learners do the same process over and over again because it changes the topic and everything anyway. So Yeah, it's not it's not the same activities per se, but the process uh, repeats. And um, a couple other things I'll just throw out there. Um, you know, how do we get this so that there's just absolute minimum prep and and real key thing uh, is that we use QR codes for the media. So whether it's the flashcards or the video stories, accessing the video stories, uh, you just don't have to prep anything. You can if you want. I, I like to to do it um, every second class. I like to, to you know, prep some you know, projector or whatever, and, and that's fine. But you don't have to. The students can literally take control of all, all that part of the class. Um, last few things I'll throw in there. Um, when we designed it, um robert was fanatical about this and i'm glad he was it was like no activity instructions are over two lines and it just made us forced us to be very clear very concise uh just simple clear concise instructions um uh, the syllabi they're all downloadable if i go to sleep can i jump in there as well yeah when we did that as well and we piloted these textbooks with original uh with teachers just to get an initial reaction with the very first editions right just two lines of instructions the challenge was give the book to students don't speak as a teacher can they do the activity yeah. and they could they could do all the activities without any direction from the teacher that's not to say your job isn't to facilitate uh and to guide them on the language use but all the instructions were just basically four dummies if you you know i shouldn't really say that about students For but, uh, it, and it works they're, they're really really fr refreshing like that right um yeah so that was that was a big that was a, a big thing we focused on um the syllabi downloadable you can just copy and paste if you want a free teacher's book free teacher's book uh it's got the answers or suggestions and it's just all just there's you don't log into things you don't sign up for things it's just just Tick, 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 go. So when uh, Arthur says he was happy with the minimum preparation, uh, I mean, that just makes us happy because it confirms that our design is working. Any, uh, I'm finished. Is there anything else, Robert, you want to add? Or uh, no, I think I'll just jump straight into uh, the last testimonial and then we'll open it up for people in the chat or if they want to sure, sure. as well. Um, so I'm going to just go I back also to, want to ask uh, Arthur if he wants to maybe spend a sure, minute. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Arthur, that'd be great. Can... He's been kind enough to actually show up, which is. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll ask you that in a second here. Um, so the final person is Raquel. You can see on the right of the screen right now. Uh, she said, I find that the students keep busy during class while engaging in the four language skills. So, um, what everybody is aware of as a language teacher is it's very challenging to, um, moves students forward with not only speaking but all the skills like writing and listening uh even reading as well and so to have materials that really move those things forward in tandem without having to plan a lot as a teacher or have to have some conscious effort of you know not neglecting something um that was really nice to hear that from raquel because that was in the design as well mm -hmm. uh, and i'll show you exactly how we've done that um i think it's a great shame that a lot of courses in universities um, seem to compartmentalize skills. So they'll teach, a, for example, a writing class, but they'll lose a lot of opportunity to incorporate that with interactive activities. I don't think in natural language use, we can really split everything up. So um, at the back of the textbook, something we're really happy with that we worked on for a long time uh, are what we call language builders. Now, in essence, these are like diaries for the students. So any of you have taught, for example, a communication class or a presentation class, you'll immediately notice that it's very hard for students to keep track of, you know, improving their grammar, building on their vocabulary, um, when they should be doing that, how often they should be doing that. So throughout the processes, throughout those seven steps, students have opportunities to jump to the back of the book and practice the grammar uh, or build on vocabulary that they're learning in that moment. Um, so they won't just look up vocabulary that they find online randomly. This will be when they try to produce language, can't do it, 
write it down and then they review it later. So there's a really good section to build on um, the writing at the back of the book. Um, also, the listening and speaking is happening at the same time. Reading isn't happening a huge amount in the books. You know, it's kind of that's probably the lowest of the four. But um, I'll throw out uh, definitely a fifth uh, skill that they'd learn with all the books, which is critical thinking, um, right. because all of this language is completely contextualized. And we completely keep them on their toes by changing the context constantly um, throughout these seven steps and with this language use. So it's not just kind of repetition of what they read, write it down. Um, they're really using their brains to understand how to, you know, uh, receptively understand language and then how to produce it in an oral and a, a written form as well. So um, there's also, one thing. go ahead, Steve. Yeah, I just want to I just think you know, in the spirit of full disclosure, I just have to say probably for reading uh, comprehension, you'd have to supplement you. Well, you yeah. would have to supplement this with um, extra materials. Yep. There's, no, there's no long reading passages or anything like that. Yeah, that's the one thing that perhaps isn't in the books. Yeah. Um, but also at the back here, um, there are extra activities. The QR codes that students use um, are also in a written form in the book as well. So um, if the internet if they, goes down, <laughs> if your internet goes down or your battery is not working or you forgot your phone or something, you can just do it anywhere at the back. But these are also great. I actually personally use these to do after they've done the game. So we can do a kind of double check that they understood how to connect parts of sentences um, and how to contextualize it. There's also expansion activities where they have to create their own sentences with the target language. So there's a whole um bulk of things at the back of the books that really support in a diary form this kind of extension of the language use and all four of those skills so um well that's, I, that, go ahead steve yeah i'll just jump in here um i just wanted to first of all thank arthur for coming um yeah. arthur is um if you um if you look in these books here um if you look in the front page or just 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 in the front cover there you're going to see his name in all the all of the three books in the third edition because he did a he did just a fantastic job helping us uh as a smart designer helping us improve the um uh the quality of the book and um and thanks for coming arthur we don't have a lot of time but if you could just give us one of your minutes and tell us if there's anything you want to add um to what we're saying the, the floor is yours you should be able to unmute now you should be able to unmute if you try. Okay. Hi. Good go. evening. Hi there. Hey. Um, definitely about the uh, minimal or no preparation. I teach 20 coma a week across five universities. Uh, as you can imagine, <laughs> I'm really busy. So having a book like this, you know, I can just, it's ready to go. I can go into a lesson, open the page. You know, I mean, I'm familiar with the books already, which helps, of course, but it's uh, uh, it does really help having a, the minimal preparation when you're so busy like me. Um yeah, traffic light trainer, it works every time uh, with all levels. Yeah, definitely very effective. Yeah. And I think uh, one thing I think you actually missed out on um, is the, I don't know if it's possible to show the smart check uh, to bring that up. I could just show. Oh, the smart check table. Yeah, I'll give it a chat. I'll give yeah. it a The smart check tables? Yeah, the smart check tables. Yeah, if you could just bring that up. Yeah. Uh, That's uh, number, step we, number two, the smart check. Here we go. Okay, yeah, and I this smart check it really gives the students um, the opportunity to see their progress, which I think, um, well, I'm pretty sure that you know most course books, course books, it's very difficult for students actually to, you know, actually see their progress. But with this, they can see you know how much they could do at one stage, and then you know a week later or so on, they can actually see it's like visual. And uh, I think that's really effective, too, because especially when students get to intermediate level, they kind of reach a plateau where they think, am I making progress? Mm -hmm. And with this, they can actually see the figures and that they are making progress. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's a, a really good point, too. I mean, there's it's full of good bits, but uh, that's a, a really good. <laughs> I think. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> OK. Thank so much. Thanks, Arthur. You're welcome. Um, just out of curiosity, um, I think we're we're coming in for a landing here, but maybe Robert, what is there anything that you kind of like about the books? Uh, if I was gonna, yeah, kind of uh, that was great, Arthur, because you mentioned something you really wanted to say that was left out, and I think if there's anything I think that I would really want to say if I had thirty seconds to about these books, it would be uh, flexibility. 
Um, mm. The same as what Arthur just said. I teach all levels of students. I teach at different campuses. I teach mixed level classes, which are a nightmare <laughs> as well, mm. because you have students sat there doing nothing who think they're great at English and some who sit there just really afraid to do anything. And because the nature of the book is not uh, designed around specific vocabulary, um, it's designed around speech acts and phrases within language use. It accommodates all kinds of levels of students in the class. So I haven't found a course yet that I taught where I couldn't use one of them. Um, that would be my closing piece, I guess. Steve, how about you? Uh, I, I would say the same thing as Arthur says, uh, particularly this semester, it's just nuts. Uh, I, I've got some new courses and I'm like, I'm, I'm bu building them as I'm going along and it's just so busy. And then, so the courses where um, I'm using the book, it's just like, I just walk in, it's, it's, uh, it's no prep. And, and I walk in, I do it, students are engaged. Um, I'm just, you know, half the time I'm just sitting there watching them, making sure that, uh, you know, tweaking, making sure that they're, um, you know, getting it the way I want them to get it. And, and you know, that's it. I'm happy. Okay, I think what I'll do now is I'll uh, stop the recording. So um, if anybody else would like to chirp in with any questions or anything, you just stop that right now.